Superhero Stuff You Should Know is part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. Hey, this is Ben from Superhero Stuff You Should Know, and I have an important announcement for you guys. At the end of every single episode of Superhero Stuff You Should Know, you might hear a shout out to our fans, one of whom is Matt Herring, who was one of the original Superhouse fans. He's always given us his support, and now it's time that we support him. Uh, we've just recently found out that Matt has been diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. And as a cancer survivor myself, I know personally that there's a lot of emotional and financial strain that comes into that. Uh, his wife, Kelly, has set up a GoFundMe account at gofundme.com slash f slash Matthew hyphen kicks hyphen cancer 039s hyphen butt. Uh, and hopefully you can help reduce the financial strain to that, as well as some of the emotional strain that comes with that. Again, that's gofundme.com slash F slash Matthew dash kicks dash cancer 039S dash butt. Matt Herring was the first, I guess you could say, true Superhouse fan. We were Superhouse at that time. So, you know, the first fan of this podcast and what we do here and um, has always supported us, talked about us, and um, he's from a town close to where I'm from, and uh, so we share that as well, and just a huge superhero fan, and, you know, nerd like the rest of us, and now he's going through that, and uh, if you could donate just at least any amount of money to that link that Ben just said, that would be truly appreciated just hang in there matt you'll beat this thing soon all right you got me superman you stop the missile from hitting poncho's taco palace you win i just have to ask why did you choose this spot out of all the spots in southern california lex it just seems odd i think i told you that it's right above the san andreas fault and i think that's actually it's actually the secondary reason why I picked it. Secondary? Yes. The primary reason is because I visited this establishment before, and frankly, the tacos were under par. I mean, I'm pretty sure they also spat in it as well. The meat was rotten, and I just I felt they had to pay. So you, in order to seek vengeance upon Poncho's Tacos, yes. you send a nuclear armament upon their business establishment. Is that correct, Lex? Superman, you have to understand, tacos are really hard to fuck up. So if you do fuck it up, you deserve a nuclear missile. Well, Lex, remind me to never get on your bad side. You sent a nuke just for a bad taco? Is this the worst taco you've ever had? Yes. Superman, why don't you ask Poncho for it? He will get you a taco within four hours. How many people have to die before you get the correct taco? What if, Lex, just hear me out, You were to just give them instructions on how to make a good taco, the one that you want. That way, we can skip the whole nuke business. You just want them to just guess what taco you think is non-nuke worthy? I think you bring up a good point, Superman, actually. I think I might start my own taco business so I can get them made the way I want them. El Luthor? Actually, that's a great name. (laughs) You You want in on this? Something tells me I should stay away. Ah, that's a good idea. I was going to put kryptonite in them anyway. Welcome once again to another edition of Superhero Stuff You Should Know by Superhouse as we finally, finally wrap up the 1978 <laughs> Superman movie. This is a this is, series has been longer than the actual movie. One episode was longer than the actual movie. <laughs> no, three-hour cut. <laughs> the three-hour Two cut. episodes, two <laughs> out of five. If you watch more than one cut of Superman yes. the movie, it would still not be as long as this deep dive. But you wouldn't get all these ju- <laughs> juicy behind-the-scenes <laughs> details. I would love it if you guys could watch the movie and then have this in the background as commentary, but let's face it, you'd finish watching the movie before You have to we watch done. it like two or three times. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes yeah. so. anyway, put this- on repeat. <laughs> this has been everybody. Andrew, how's it going, everybody, from the internets? Yes, Uh, and we are going to dive into the final part of Superman 78. Krypton! Yes, but before that, uh, we're going to go into some of the corrections department that we have here. So, uh, first off, I said, to my shame, that Addis Ababa is probably not a real place. Turns (laughs) out, 
I was wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody <laughs> we, in Ethiopia. Yeah, Googled that, yes. Yeah. It's at the capital of Ethiopia, right? It's the capital. <laughs> yeah, it's the freaking capital. Shows how much I know about Ethiopia. So we apologize to the people of Addis Ababa who are probably sick of the Superman connection anyway. Because that's, uh, the, main, yeah. that's the main thing that people know. They might have had culture. too much of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're sorry. It is a real place. Uh, also, I did get something mixed up in part two oh, of shit. Superman the movie that I didn't realize. I said that Noel Neal was Lois Lane in the Superman serial of 1948. And then Phyllis Coates was Lois Lane in Superman vs. the Atom Man. And then was... Lois Lane in the George Reeves show, and then Noel Neal took over. That's actually not correct. Noel Neal was in both the Superman serial and Superman vs. the Atom Man. Phyllis Coates was only in uh, the first season of George Reeves and Superman and the Mole Men. I got it mixed up because I read Superman and the Mole Men and thought it was referring to you Superman read versus it. the... Yeah. Okay. Superman vs. the Atom Man. But yeah, Phyllis Coates was only Lois Lane for George Reeves, not for Kirk Allen. How dare you, Ben, make such mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so I the Addis Ababa is worse. <laughs> it's not even real. <laughs> it's not even real. And we also <laughs> made some comment, why don't people know more about geography in one episode? Yeah, we did. And then so... <laughs> look at us. Look at us now. <laughs> hey, like, if if they can't even get the right, like, where the East Coast is in the United States. Oh, dude. There's no some, way they're going to know that Addis Ababa is real. Some of, anyway. yeah, that's obviously the extreme. They do, I, I'm sure they get the worst of the worst for those edits, but yeah. it's still, no one should, <laughs> no one should be that bad. Yeah. You know? So, uh, on top of that, we did have a poll that we released on Twitter where we asked, there are three cuts of Superman the movie, which is your favorite? How real is Addis Ababa? And Not real, real at all? <laughs> sort of real. <laughs> and maybe it's true. Maybe we should put that poll up <laughs> before we uh, release this episode. Uh, okay, so we just to recap, there are three different cuts of Superman the movie. The theatrical oh, cut, yeah. which I believe is the one that's currently streaming on uh, HBO Max, as well as DC Universe until December 18th. Uh, and that is two hours and 24 minutes. They don't have the fucking Donner cut on there? I don't think it's the Donner cut on there. Oh, man. Uh, the they Donner cut from 2001, the director's cut, uh, which is this one, as you guys are seeing on the on the YouTube, uh, that one is an extra eight minutes long. It's two hours and 31 uh, minutes long and contains the scenes such as Superman going through the gauntlet of traps and the, oh, yeah. the bullets and everything, as well as Noel Neal and Kirk Allen's cameos. We may play Lois Lane's parents. Okay. So that's cool. And then there's the extended cut that was released in 2017. That is three hours and eight minutes long. And that's oh, the yeah. extended TV cut that contains. That's the one you need. That's the <laughs> or is it? As we'll go into, <laughs> we'll go into Downer's opinions of that cut okay. actually before we uh, before we wrap this episode. Uh, but it does have extra footage of a lot of the stuff that we're going to cover today. Actually, Lois Lane burps for five minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even think about setting you up. I wasn't wasn't my intention. Can you read my mind? <laughs> <laughs> we need we need that. There hey, you if you are if you are a female <laughs> listener out there and can do that and put that as a we'll put that as a bumper we'll in like bumper. <laughs> the next like five episodes or something. Well, maybe not that many. We'll definitely use it though. That's we'll incredible. That. Yeah. So. Uh, those are the three different cuts. So out of the poll, we had 11% say the three-hour extended TV cut. <laughs> Plebeians. So, yeah. 22% said the theatrical cut, which okay. is currently streaming. And 67%, the majority, is for the director's cut. Which Actually, is that is the correct character. answer. So That is the correct that answer. That is the correct answer, as you'll see. The mob I, rules. I have pretty much seen, yeah, I've seen all three. Yeah. Uh, and I can say that this is probably my favorite. The stuff that's in the three-hour cut. Should have been cut. I don't really, with the exception of like maybe two things, which we'll okay. go over today. Okay. Uh, that I wish were kind of edited back into this. Oh man! One time I acquired online a <laughs> <laughs> Dumb and Dumber uh, thing, and it was like some extra long TV cut of Dumb and Dumber. And trust me, I know Dumb and Dumber left and right. Right. And there was like extra added scenes of them in like fucking. Uh, you, you've seen it, right? Yeah. But they're in the fucking hotel for an extra, like, fucking 20 minutes, it feels like. <laughs> that shit, I'm glad it was cut out of there. I don't know what I downloaded. Right. Well, like, you these, got these scenes need to be deleted sometimes. Yeah, this is this is back in the old days where they were trying to sell airtime. So the yeah, longer the yeah, movie, yeah. The, the more commercials. The more the commercials. The all kinds are like, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We got to get sell this picture one more time. <laughs> so we'll I got to avoid jail. <laughs> 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 Gotta launder that money somehow. <laughs> Bobby, get in here. <laughs> Kane. So, yeah. Anyway, 
part four, we left off with Superman thinking that he caught Lex Luthor, and, and it turned out that it was Telly Savalas from Kojak <laughs> in the Benton Newman draft. Uh, I know that somehow, but I've never seen the show. It's just referenced in the 90s a lot. Really? In I, the 90s? I, I, refer, well, I used to... Yes, I know it somehow. Huh. You know, I, I, I used you, to baby. watch I used to watch Nick at Night, and, you know, Nick at Night. Yeah, yeah. So... I never watched that show, but maybe it popped up there. I there don't know. A, there was a remake with uh, Ving Rhames at one point, but I don't know. I don't think it, it was that. It, was, I, it was, wasn't that big. I didn't know what Telly Savalas looked like, but mm. I knew that reference. Right. Somehow. You know, you you just yeah. ingest it's so much of pop, pop culture. culture. Yeah. Some shit exactly. gets to you, you know? I don't know. As I said, I kind of wish Telly Savalas was cast as Lex Luthor. He has a look. In this. He's, got, for sure. he's got the look, and he's played yeah. villains. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. He wouldn't be saying, Who Loves You, Baby? In a perfect world. In a perfect world. We also would have had um, uh, Breaking Bad guy, Cranston. Cranston. Yeah. That also would, yeah. should have happened, but, uh, but what can anyway, you do? In the Benton Newman draft, as I said, a lot of our previous episode was on all the stuff that was in that draft that was not in the movie. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, but this is finally the part in that draft where Lex and company go to hijack the nuclear missile that they're going to use to okay. set off the, the earthquake in the San yeah, Andreas Fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're finally at that point. So this is where we begin yeah. our pod. Yes. This is, so we begin this episode <laughs> today on the hijacking. Um, Indeed. Funny enough, even though the Benton and Newman... I keep saying Benton Newman as if that's the guy's name. It's Benton and Newman. I and was... Two I Newmans. wanted for a second, but you're like, okay, it's two guys. Yeah. It's actually three people just... Uh, a Puzo in the one background. Is ben- Puzo, Benton, in and the corner, the, the looking Newmans. at them. The Newmans are the, uh, the couple. <laughs> oh, the Newmans are a couple. The Newmans are a couple, ah, yeah. Ah, bachelor style. Because Newman's wife did the rewrites to punch up Lois's role. Leewald style. Leewald and bachelor style. Oh, yes, there you go. The best. backlog for that. Yeah. The team. Yeah. So, anyway, Benton, Puzo... It's Puzo, Benton, Newman, Newman, really, if I'm really going to be accurate. Benton and the Newmans. Benton and the Newmans, plus working off a of Puzo script. I mean, that's complicated as fuck anyway. Donner. Thus, Benton, Newman. Donner just really pulled together. <laughs> yeah. Um, Donner pulled together a mess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is the script that was written before Donner signed on and is the one where the South Lines were like, everything you have is perfect. Yeah, they, they were like, <laughs> ah, it's going to be great. <laughs> Okay, it's so gonna fun, have tights. Funny enough, even though their total script of both Superman the movie and Superman two was four hundred pages, the hijacking sequence in their script is actually shorter than Mankiewicz's. Oh, really? Mankiewicz actually extended a lot. Okay, which you end up seeing That's in the three cool. hour cut. Um, but yeah, in the Benton Newman script, it's mostly just Miss Tessmacher jumping onto the convoy that has the missile, and then sort of as like a cat burglar and then sneaking in and, and reprogramming the codes okay. and then jumping off a bridge and into the water to meet with Lex and Otis. Okay. And that's it. Uh, and during this time, Lex is apparently oblivious to the fact that Miss Tessmacher had saved uh, Superman in Mount Vesuvius. As okay. Covered, where the, in the volcano they had the confrontation. It would have been better, but they didn't have the money for that. That would have been cool, though, yeah, man. Yeah, it would have, yeah. It has like a kind of like secret, like vi- villain secret lair vibe. Yeah, to... it's got that. It feels like something you would have tried they would have tried to do in the 1940s serial as like a clip. Yeah, yeah. No will offense Super- to people in Greece. <laughs> will, will Superman survive Mount Vesuvius? <laughs> yeah. Find out next week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, Lex apparently just thought that it took a while for Miss Desmacher to catch up to them. Okay. He's oblivious to the fact that she saved Superman. Right. In this. Uh, and then he has her go and reprogram the codes on the on the missile. Uh, the Mankiewicz script, again, way more elaborate. They stage a car crash for Miss Tessmacher to be the victim of, and that's when they dress her up in, like, the Marilyn Monroe wig and the skimpy oh, yeah. red dress uh, and everything, and they have Otis... That, and then have Otis reprogram the codes as uh, Lex comes on as the ambulance guy, the paramedic, okay. uh, and all that. So uh, Otis fucks it up, and Lex beats him, and so then they have to... <laughs> Figure out another coup in order for Miss Tassmacher to go on and reprogram. So Lex straight up beats Otis. Yeah, he's yeah. Where Otis, uh, he fucks up the code because he it's supposed to be one coordinate it's supposed to be eleven and the other one is seven. Okay. But, he, but instead he put it as as one seventeen. Okay. And he's like, oh, I'm am sorry, Mister Luthor. I, I think my arm wasn't long enough. Does he? He doesn't beat him in the real cut though, right? I think he does actually. Kinda, well, you don't you don't really see. It's him. not like a Joker beating though. Well, it's no, like, no, no, uh, yeah, it's yeah. more of a comedic beat where Otis is like, you know, I'm sorry, Mister Luthor. I, my arm wasn't long enough. And Lex is like, you want to see a really long arm? <laughs> Do you really want to see a long arm? And he turns around and starts beating him, and he loses control of the car. Okay. And then you cut to them actually doing the heist. Okay. Uh, but 
In I had something worse in mind for some reason, <laughs> but yes, I could see a seventies Lex Luthor he beating beat for him Otis. with a crowbar. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got it. And the next time you see Otis, he's got like a black eye. Yeah, <laughs> and that's you like, dimwit. <laughs> but the longest version is the three-hour version. Has a ton more gags. Honestly, the three-hour version doesn't really give you that much more Christopher Reeve. It gives uh, you a well, lot. Fuck it then. It gives you a lot more Otis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, cut it, <laughs> cut it. So. <laughs> Otis in the three hour <laughs> Why cut they think that was necessary <laughs> we need to show you this cut with the Otis the uh, character arc and the yeah. all the drama surrounding yes, Otis exactly so in the beginning Otis is trying to set up the car crash with a remote control, control car okay and Lex is looking at him and he's like do you live in England Otis and he's like no Mr. Luthor and he's like then you're dr- why are you driving on the wrong side of the road <laughs> <laughs> So then they do. I'm the, sorry, boss. <laughs> then uh, they do the car crash, and the Miss Tesmacher is like all decked out and everything. And Lex is like, "Hurry up!" And she's like, "You hurry up." Have you tried running in heels? And then she says, "You probably have," <laughs> which then implies that Lex has cross dressed in this continuity. I guess so. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, or or that he's a guy that seeks all kinds of knowledge, mm-hmm. even knowledge. <laughs> The knowledge of how it feels to wear heels. And run in them, yeah. Yeah, I guess. That's the only thing so, I can think of. We'll see. But that joke was yeah. cut as well. as well. It as probably should have been cut because it it's just hard to parse that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like they do the whole stage car crash, so the military comes, yeah. and then Larry Hagman pre-Dallas shows up. Okay. As uh, one of the guys who uh, decides, I'm aware to give Dallas her, was a show. Give her mouth to mouth. I don't know much about <laughs> Dallas. It was a little it's, bit it's before okay. my time. It's okay. Basically, this guy was. It, it kind of feels like a cameo because he wasn't famous yet. It wasn't on Nick at Night, Ben. <laughs> so I just don't know. I know Mork and Mindy. I know Dragnet. Right. I know Bewitched. This is. Mostly I used to watch for, all these jams. This is mostly famous for the Who Shot Jr. I Dream line. of Dream Genie, Ben. Oh, it's classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They were good. They were good, though. But yes, I yeah. I don't know any if it's if it wasn't on Nick at Night in the yeah. '90s. I don't know about earlier TV. Have I you feel sh- like. have you heard of the Who Shot Jr. I thing? again, that was there were references in Tiny Toons. I think about to that. that. Yeah, yeah. Larry Hagman was Jr. Okay, so Larry okay. Hagman is in this briefly as the guy who insists on giving mouth to mouth to Miss Tessmacher. Okay, and then there's a gag in the three hour version where she wakes up and says like, "What did you have for lunch, Jesus?" And then like, oh my god, it, it, again, that was also cut. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's too much. There's a lot that's in here, and then, that's like a rapey vibe. Right? Also, that too. Like, yeah, it, it does not age well because I, I mean, dude, the worst is think of remember Nerds, Revenge of the Nerds, one right, of those yeah. movies. Yeah, one of the nerds, I think, pretty much has a scene that's. Do you do you know what I'm talking about? I, I, don't, I don't. I haven't seen it. Oh, dude. Okay. <laughs> Essentially, it's a rape scene, and it's an unintentional one. It's just how unwoke they were at the right, time. Yeah. But basically. They go into like this fun house, mm-hmm. and uh, they switch. The guys switch bodies. The guys wearing like a Darth Vader costume or something. This is at the time when Star Wars property right, yeah. was probably cheap as hell. Mm-hmm. They were and, and like so the girl has sex with somebody that she's. It's they go into a oh, room that has no oh, lights. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and they yeah. and she has no. She doesn't. She has sex with somebody she didn't intend to. Gotcha. And it's oh man, dude. That's why. That's Jeez. why they don't bring that movie back. I can see that, yeah. In this one, it does seem like it's part of their plan. Yeah. But it is pretty, like, it's... It's not great. It's not great, yeah, no. Uh, so people weren't, people weren't, like, I don't know, they weren't thinking about that kind of stuff as much as they should have been. No, no. Yeah. And then again, to make it with his credit, that is part of the plan that Lex has, but who knows how yeah. much Ms. Tessmacher was in on that. Do you want to add a rapey vibe to Superman no, in 78? No, 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 no. You well, could have evil in another way. I mean, that is still in the theatrical cut, though. Is it? Yeah, where they, she shows up. I think yeah on the on at the car crash. I don't and Larry that part. I think I watched the other cut. It's anyway. not the most memorable scene. Yeah, movie. yeah. But yeah. we're just bringing it up. Yeah. Uh, and then later on, there's stuff where after Lex beats Otis, they've like he's parked the car and like Lex has like an alone moment where he's just like slamming the car door for in frustration. I'm like, we don't really need to see this. <laughs> the vulnerability yeah. of Lex Luthor, like it's 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 weird. Yeah. So Richard Donner has an opinion on this three hour cut which we have right here. It's terrible. That was an original assembly. It was nothing more than an assembly. And we cut most of the bad shit out. And in good taste, the producers decided in those days if you sold a picture to television, you sold it by length. The longer the film, the more money they got. So they went back and got somebody, not Stuart Baird, 
that's my fucking ace in the hole to put all the footage back in that we need that we'd taken out it puts in silly things that i don't even know why i shot them <laughs> there's something funny about that i don't even know why i shot them but it was on paper so we did it <laughs> and then when you look at it you realize no this is demeaning and out it comes yep so that's Donner's opinion on the three-hour version, not his preferred take. And uh, Stuart Baird, by the way, was the editor of this movie. So that's yeah, who he yeah. meant. So he's yeah. saying, like, the main, the actual credited editor, my editor, was not involved in oh, yeah. putting this stuff back I, in. I could see that for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They got, they just fucking trying to Salt squeeze every money. ounce yeah. of money out of it that they could. You guys, this is a three-hour version of Superman yeah. put on the air. They're here. paying their debts. Yeah. And look, I know we're making a lot of fun out of this, yep. not to besmirch the Salt Kind's name, but it <laughs> seems like there was a lot going on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The only thing that I like about the three-hour cut that's added in that's not in the director's cut, I saw it as a deleted scene in the director's cut. Yeah. They have deleted scenes that are separate. And I was like, they should have edited this back in, uh, is the scene where Lex tells Otis to feed the babies. Oh, yeah. Because there's a payoff later on to that, which we'll go into. Oh, okay. So it makes sense. So it does make yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, feels a, it makes the sequence with Lex a little longer, but yeah. it does make sense. Does it uh, make him seem more evil? Yeah, it does. Okay, actually. well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so you're saying the no, comedic effect with the villains, I do think that was a... To the detriment. A of, detriment of the movie, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but in this version, uh, not necessarily in the scene I just described, but in the payoff. Yeah. It makes Lex look a lot colder. Okay. So uh, we'll go into that. But anyway, the Benton Newman script has Superman oblivious to the fact that Lex is stealing this missile and is flying around trying to spot any bald man in Metropolis as Lex Luthor, <laughs> world's greatest detective he this is not. Is not great <laughs> here. Not quite as the detective that uh, radio superman was right. back in the day right uh but we see like the same gang of thieves that he stopped at one point who were like stealing televisions and tried to hit him with a crowbar right. and stuff right they, they uh they're like trying to steal stuff again and they see superman flying and they're just like oh and then they just routinely just go back into the store to return it <laughs> <laughs> um superman doesn't even see see them and instead he stops a school fire Okay. And then it becomes a headline in the Daily Planet where, like, Superman saves, like, hundreds of kids and everything. It's a school bus in which a kid says, Dick splashed another kid? <laughs> <laughs> you just had to bring it over here. <laughs> All the Sorry. Man of Steel fans are like, Sorry. we hate these guys. Sorry to break it up again. <laughs> Dick Splash is just so unforgivable. So Superman, unlike the version that Kevin Costner was trying to uh, yeah. battle, he actually does save a whole bunch of kids in front of everybody and gets Maybe. publicity for it. So, uh, back at Lex's headquarters, Lex opens up the paper only to find that that article was completely gone because he thought that it killed Superman with okay. Kryptonite. And he asked Miss Tessmacher for the article. Uh, and Mr. Tessmacher caves in and gives it to him. And there's like a weird reference to the James Cagney movie Public Enemy. I don't okay. know if you've seen this. Where no, it's famous I have because not. Ja this is where James Cagney uh, basically shoves a grapefruit in uh, the other actress's face. Um in, in a moment of domestic abuse. But basically, this script is trying to reference that that could happen, but Lex instead is very nice to her and says, and even like fake cries and says, what? I've been mean to you and everything. I don't deserve you. So uh, instead, I'm going to take you on a night on the town. So he okay. puts her in a plane, and you know he's got something up his sleeve. And he brings up that Superman only, he always does. Superman only shows up when someone's in danger, and he's going to know that someone is faking. So uh, I'm going to take the lone parachute, and I'll see you later, Mr. Desmoker. And he jumps out <laughs> with the parachute on. Okay, and that was cut. That was Correct? that was cut. That was cut yeah. before. Okay. Minkowitz cut that before. That was not even okay. shot. Um, okay, but okay. funny enough, this whole idea of like <laughs> I want to put my girlfriend in danger so Superman shows up because he's going to know if right. she's faking. That's actually in Superman Returns. Oh, it, oh, yeah. In okay. Superman Returns, Parker Posey's character, Kitty, uh, is in, like, a runaway car. And later on, she confronts Lex about it. And Lex is like, Superman would be able to tell if you're faking. I'm convinced that the screenwriters of Superman Returns didn't just rewatch the movies. They yeah. reread these scripts. Oh, right. I could see stuff. that. Because they got that. And then there's the whole miniature thing I was telling you about. Yeah. Where the Lex has the whole play set that's a miniature of the destruction that he's going to cause. Yeah. And that's exactly what happens in Superman Returns. So... It looks like that's likely from this stuff. Man, I saw Superman Returns twice in the theater and never again. Yeah. But I got to say, plane sequence and the bullet to the eye. Yes. So good. So good. That's the best so stuff. So good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Lex takes off in the parachute and leaves Miss Tessmacher there. And she's like, where's my parachute? And he's like, 
I'm wearing it. <laughs> he takes <laughs> off. And Superman has to save her from the crashing plane. And oh, shit, man. So, that okay. could, again, more expensive stuff, though, because it's yeah. not really that needed. Uh, and so I lo- It's like Vesuvius. The interior to Mount Vesuvius <laughs> was changed to some pool somewhere. Some pool in Lex's headquarters. Indoor pool, like... Yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, it's yeah, fine, you yeah, know, yeah. but when you think of what could have been, it's mm. just like, oh, man. Okay. It's a cool sequence, but again, it doesn't really do a lot for the story. Superman's in a fucking regular size, not even Olympic pool <laughs> in a goddamn, like, you know, with the fucking fair, kryptonite yeah, yeah, around yeah, yeah, his yeah. neck. I get it. Which is, I mean, there is some uh, urgency to the scene, though, because yeah. he's fucking drowning. Yeah. So No, it still works, but yeah. compared to what we could have gotten. Yeah, yeah. You know. Was it an indoor pool in Mount Vesuvius? How do they fucking fuck up no. Superman in that? In what? In Mount Vesuvius? With the, the scene that they took out. That's oh, uh, well, those were where the pages were taken out for some reason. There so was no, like, Superman with a thing around his neck? I mean, it was Kryptonite neck. around his neck. I just didn't know how he got, like, got the lava or something? Him. No, I think he just left him there in, in the erupting volcano. Oh, and he was supposed to be just taken and over it, by lava with yeah, Kryptonite around yeah, him. Yeah, but oh, Mr. Yeah. Smucker saves him. Okay, yeah. Sorry, yeah, that's yeah, been like three episodes she ago. She throws the kryptonite into the lava, and then okay. Superman carves the tunnel for them to get out. Okay, And Lex okay. apparently didn't even know that until now. Okay. You know, where he reads the article and finds out Superman's still alive and puts her in that plane. Okay. He's like, all right, well, you might as well be useful for me. Okay. So Superman saves Tessmacher from the crashing plane and okay. brings up, like, why do you have to keep being with this guy who puts you in danger? And Ms. Right. Tessmacher, Tessmacher says, well, what can I tell you? He's my leader. And Superman says, quote, okay. Take me to your leader. <laughs> okay, obviously great. was set up for that line. I know we like Superman being sci-fi, but that's a <laughs> that's too much. So, and then the Benton Newman script just goes directly to Superman grabbing Lex by the lapels in his headquarters. Okay, uh, intimidation mode. Him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to intimidation back, soups. Yeah. So now Superman is in the confrontation with Lex in the Mankiewicz and in the movie version. Obviously, a lot of this stuff was cut out. We just got the heist. And then Mankiewicz moved the whole thing where Lex is like, let me contact you, Superman, through this radio frequency. Right. And I'm going to, you know, make this pellet drop and cause right, right, right. people to die. And then Superman flies over, goes to his headquarters. Then Mankiewicz put in the whole, uh, you know, the gauntlet of all the traps and stuff. Right. And then Superman shows up. In okay. There. So that is us basically catching up to where we are now in the confrontation. Uh, so let's see. Funny enough, a lot of Lex Luthor in this movie. I know that I've talked about how like he doesn't really feel quite like Lex Luthor to me, but yeah. uh, you can tell when you read the Golden Age appearances by Lex that they drew a lot from there because there's a, there are stories where Lex does try to communicate to Superman uh, right. through the radio wave type of thing. Okay. Um, which, or so, it's a similar method. I don't know if it's specifically that, but it's a story called The Invisible Luthor from Superman number 10. Okay. Where he says that. Um, number 10. Number 10. Superman number 10, not Superman Action Comics. 10. Not Action Comics. Okay, no. gotcha. Uh, sometimes Superman, the Superman issues, though, were uh, Action Comics reprinted. Oh, so really? So if yeah. you read Action Comics number one and Superman number one, uh, you f- you'll find that Superman number one is actually an extended version of, of Action the same Comics. Story. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, so Superman, uh, Action Comics number one has like a one page version of the origin. Yeah. And then Superman number one has a two page version that apparently was the original one. And okay. because they didn't have enough space. They cut that, and then they cut all the scenes that they wrote leading up to Superman okay. showing up to the governor's house to ask him to excuse, pardon this person who's innocent. I I, I just love the guy in the corner of, uh, I think, Action Comics 1, where he's like, and this is a visual for <laughs> oh, everybody yeah. watching YouTube, okay? I'm just going to go Talking radio cover, silent right? for a yeah. second. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew has got a shocked face with both heads on his hand. I mean, both hands on his head. <laughs> There's one guy in the corner. If you haven't seen it, take his a look. His mind is blown. His yeah. mind, he's like, he's he's in terror. He's in absolute yeah, terror yeah, seeing yeah. Superman pick up a car and smash. Is he smashing it? <laughs> he's smashing the yeah, car. He's yeah, smashing his fucking green beetle looking car Pretty or something much, like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Uh, so let's see. Luthor did that. Also, the whole gauntlet of traps thing. He didn't really do that, but in Action Comics number two, a criminal does try to trap Superman and have a whole bunch of guys come out with machine guns and, and, okay. and shoot him a lot. So it could be coming from that as well. Uh, and then Lex Luthor has an earthquake machine okay. in like his second appearance to, his, oh, really? to cause all these earthquakes. That's that DARPA, man. <laughs> Fucking conspiracy, yeah, dude. Yeah. So Chemtrails. Uh, I think it's very... <laughs> Luthor's at, Luthor's the, in on at the bottom of that stuff. Q, Q Luthor. Q Luthor. <laughs> Q Lex. Q Lex, yeah. 
yeah. but yeah, this is they really need all, to do something with that. These are all the Golden Age appearances of Lex Luthor. So I'm like, okay, I'll give that one to you. I think it's likely Puzo read those and is like, all right, let me just right. do the same type of thing. Puzo was probably old enough to have read it. Maybe like in the very beginning, dude. True. If he's an yeah. old man in the seventies. I mean, he might have been there since the beginning. True, yeah. That's you very know? true. He might probably grew up at least Silver Age, if yeah. not Golden. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, but I know he definitely combed through the libraries of DC in order to yeah. be boned up on all the stuff that was going on. Yeah, in, in I mean, obviously and, by the time he got there too, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I, he probably grew up with some fucking really old school shit as I could well. I see that. I can yeah. see that. Uh, yeah. But obviously, Miss Desmacher and Otis, not from the Golden Age comics. Yeah. Uh, the underground lair, not really from the Golden Age comics with the swimming pool. And the real estate stuff is definitely not from there either. What happened to the Nazi guy? He's Well, he got cut between the, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> the Benton Newman script <laughs> and the Mankiewicz version. However, we're probably going to see more of him because, again, he's in the Benton Newman draft, which includes Superman the movie and Superman 2. Okay. So we'll probably Oh yeah, more he's coming bring, bringing him back. He's going to come back, yeah. Okay. At some point. Maybe not in this episode because I don't think he does that much more. Except for right now. Yeah, except for right now. Okay. We'll see. All right. Uh, Copy <laughs> yeah. that, Ben. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, Mankiewicz, instead of beforehand, the pellet was a real thing. The whole thing, I'm like, you know, this pellet will drop and kill hundreds of people in these right. city blocks. And Mankiewicz replaced it with the whole idea of Superman asking him, where's the pellet, Luthor? And then <laughs> Luthor's like, it's in the back <laughs> of my mind, actually. <laughs> what? Yeah, where it was just a ploy to get Superman over there. Oh, okay. Because Mankiewicz yeah, yeah, probably yeah, didn't yeah, want yeah, to yeah. do, like, let's do that on top of the earthquake thing at the same time. This is a pellet it's for what much. again? It was it, basically it was like an acid pellet or explosive pellet. It was basically something just to get Superman over to his lair. Okay. So that he could kill him with the kryptonite. Dupe him. Yeah, exactly. Dupe that uh, big but it does blue have, boy scout. <laughs> it has a great line though, where Superman is like, "Is that how a warped brain of yours gets your kicks by planning the deaths of innocent people?" And Lex is like, "No, by causing the deaths of innocent people." That's when it gets so. I mean, yeah, it works, I guess, but I feel like that's. Maybe too on the nose these days. It's a little too days, much, but Hackman but... does nail the delivery of Yeah, that, that's true. It's Actually, it does work. For what it is. Like, remember, yeah, this is before yeah. the more morally ambiguous yeah, Luthor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was still kind of on that verge towards the Bronze Age, though. I feel like but... I've just gotten so picky in my age now. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, I, I wish I didn't pick apart that shit well, sometimes. I can't blame you because, like, we... I want to see more of that with Lex. Yeah. Like, the whole... As I've talked about before, like, one of the things I love about Lex Luthor, why he's, like, what probably my favorite supervillain, is yeah. because he believes more he's the More than Joker? Hero. Probably, yeah. Really? Because he believes he's the hero, as opposed yeah. to Joker, who just revels in being the villain. He's uh, the two very Joker's uh, chaotic evil. Yeah. And then Luthor's lawful evil. Lawful evil. evil. I was thinking yeah. that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so, Lex then reveals his plan to Superman, and in the Benton Newman draft, Superman intimidates Lex... And Lex immediately backs down and surrenders and says, let's go for tea. <laughs> and, and so he's like, let me ring for tea. And he presses a button, and that button launches the missile. Okay. And Superman is none the wiser. So I'm like, wow. okay, that's okay. kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, and then we get a funny beat where the president gets informed that this missile has gone off. Uh, but he isn't at the White House. He's out golfing. So huh. some things have not changed. I found that, I find that unbelievable, Ben. <laughs> Golfing even during yeah. important events, I just yes. don't know what's going on with yes, that. Yes, indeed. Uh, and then <coughs> also, how much of our law audience do we want to lose? <laughs> <laughs> Half Man of Steel fans are already checking out. <laughs> <laughs> you will see how much of a fan of Man of Steel I no, no, am no, no, no. when we get there. I just have complicated feelings. Should we just all. should we just make up for it by saying like one thing we liked about it each? Okay, go ahead, Ben. The first flight sequence is amazing. Okay. Where Cavill takes off for the first time. Okay. And he just revels in flying. And I'm just like, holy shit, we've never seen this before. That's true. We, it's that's usually true. just like, you know, cut to, he's an adult and he can fly and that's it. But like the reaction of like, holy shit, I can fly. That's so relatable. I'm like, right. okay, I wish there were more scenes like this. Right. And the music is fantastic. Uh, yeah, the score, is, the score is awesome. In general, but that scene in particular, yeah. I loved a lot of what Russell Crowe said. Mm-hmm. And um, he's he's so good in that movie, man. Like fucking Jor El, he's killing it. Would you like say he, he's a better Jor El than than, uh, than Marlon Brando when he's doing that? I, I mean, think because he gets bagel. more to do. I <laughs> yeah. think he gets a little bit more to do, and he he does seem to like Russell Crowe is there to play. Yeah. I mean, to be serious. Yeah, yeah. He's there to play the game. Like yeah. he is not 
This is not a throwaway role for him. Mm -hmm. He takes it serious, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And he did say he'd be down to do... They were talking about doing a Jor-El movie or some shit for a while. Hmm. I think I think that was there. So <laughs> I love that. The first yeah. flight's good. Um, and God, man. like I love the Krypton sequence. I know you don't like it that much, but I, I love Krypton parts. And I actually have a let's say a controversial opinion about the last fight with Zod. Oh, but let's say we'll save that. For we've the, moved. The I'm going to let's, let's do a little hint. We've moved up our man of skill still in our schedule. So let's just say we're not going in chronological order here. Right. Yeah. So yeah. more on that later. Yeah. Uh, in the sequence where people are noticing, holy shit, the missiles are going in the wrong way or yeah. whatever, uh, we have a couple actors of note. One is John Ratzenberger. <laughs> okay. Of Pixar fame. The guy who oh, okay. Uh, as well as uh, Cheers, I think. Uh, oh. So he's in there. Is he like the bigger guy? He's like the big guy with the mustache and everything. I don't know he always, talking about. He's yeah. a voice in like every single Pixar yeah, movie yeah, 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 at some yeah. point. So oh, does a, he do the pig in Toy uh, yeah, Story? Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Yeah. I know yeah. you're talking about. He's in that. And then another actor who's in this, who's in a, also in Superman 2 and 3 in different characters, is Shane Rimmer, who, uh, the late Shane Rimmer, but he's known to us as the guy from Batman Begins who says, it's going to blow. <laughs> 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 I feel like Nolan cast him because he used to have that type of role in, he was because he was in the first three Supermans. Yeah. He's in one of the Bond movies. Like, right. Nolan would have grown up with him and he's like, can I bring you back just to be that guy? Dude, again? the chase sequence in Batman Begins, that movie is so... <laughs> I know I'm the king of tangents, but that movie is so... Plays it so straightforward, and, like, you know, the themes, the big themes Nolan does, mm -hmm. and all this, like, so heavy, so much gravitas. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the chase sequence, he's like, he's driving a black... <laughs> Thing. Think, yeah. Look at that! <laughs> oh my God! I gotta get me one. Of it's those. like no, yeah. <laughs> Nolan get, take amps up the cheese factor. Nolan must be like, I'm going to be a Hollywood director here. <laughs> you know, like I don't know. I think he he he, he leans into the cheese a bit more He's in those a little bit into the Michael Bay part of things. A little bit, which yeah. is fine. I actually like, uh, you know, he lets his hair down. Yeah. Nolan lets his hair down in those yeah, scenes. Yeah. I think a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, this is. Where, I guess, Shane Rimmer first appears in this pop culture type stuff, because this was before The Spy Who Loved Me, where he was also, which he was also in. That's a Bond movie uh, that I think is one of Nolan's favorites as well. Uh, yeah, obviously, a, obviously a fucking um, Bond fan, Nolan. Yeah, 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 of course. So yeah. it stands to reason that, that Shane Rimmer's appearances in these 70s genre movies is what right. led him to get cast right, in that right, role right. when Batman Begins. So uh, we are off and running with the missile. It is okay. heading towards the San Andreas Fault. Here's another thing. Uh, in the Benton and Newman script, it was just one missile. Mank okay. ups the stake by making it two. Okay. So that's Mank cool. is Mank's doing a good job. Yeah, he is. I like what he's done he here. I like Mank. <laughs> maybe maybe he has a future. Maybe he knew what he was doing. <laughs> he has a future in this business. <laughs> so, yeah, when we get back from the break, we will cover what happens after those missiles are launched. You gave us two missiles, Mank. <laughs> you know, our... <laughs> Jason Todd, you are ready for the field, but first, you need a name. Not Robin, but a new identity. I have a whole list of other names. Let's see. You also contributed your own. So, at the top of your list, we have Blue Jay, Eagle, Little Beaver. Little Beaver? Yeah, man. It's the most coolest one. It's the top of my list. Let's put a pin in that one. Let's. Don't you want to be something cool, like maybe, I don't know, Nightwing? They will never see Little Beaver coming. Little Beaver will strike fear to the hearts of criminals. I'm telling you, Bruce, that's the one for me. Jason, I don't think Little Beaver really instills fear. I feel like Little Beaver is just going to make criminals, I don't know, laugh or something. It's not really the effect we want. No, you see, it just comes out of nowhere. Like, no one ever expects a beaver to just come up and, and gnaw at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't even know what your costume would look like. Like, would you have two fake front teeth? Would they okay. be fangs? Okay, get this. Mostly red, keeping with the Robin theme, all right? But then, okay. like, some brown to kind of go with the beaver aesthetic. And then, some yellow accents, of course. And then I would wear, like, this really big buck-tooth prosthetic teeth. That way I could block bullets with them. And also, 
gnaw at enemies. What about a mask? The teeth will be so big, I won't even need a mask. I don't know, Jason. I, I like the protective quality for your face, but you still need something to hide the rest of it. Protect your identity. I hide behind the soul of the beaver. All right, I'll have Lucius draft up a costume, but I'm skeptical. Again, I think we should really explore these other names. Beaver and the bat. Has a nice ring to it, huh? I don't think so, but we'll just have to see what the criminals think. Cut two. Batman and Little Beaver are out on patrol. As a criminal shoots his gun towards Batman, Little Beaver jumps into action. I got you, Batman! Ah! Ah! Jason! This wasn't such a good idea, was it? Oh, thank God. I thought Gordon would have to be introduced to Little Beaver. Time to find the next orphan. Cut to option two. Jason blocks it. Pating! See, I told you this was an awesome idea, Bruce. To be honest, I was kind of hoping it would kill you. I didn't really want to introduce Little Beaver to Commissioner Gordon or to the press, but... I guess we'll just keep going. Little Beaver drags fear to the heart of criminals and the Gotham underworld. All right, everybody, if you like that, we have that plus news, plus we're bringing back some opinion pieces and uh, review type stuff and all kinds of stuff in our $5 tier on Patreon. So just go to patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod. And if you become part of the $5 tier, you can see these new bonus episodes basically consider it super house dlc oh Ooh la la vous écoutez des trucs des superheroes que vous devriez savoir we got two missiles in this picture now <laughs> so tell me what, what we go what happens with them ben? All right, all right. well we'll cover a little bit of the Benton newman script where there's one missile and then we'll go into the make it stuff one missile is so, not yeah. enough i know <laughs> so originally Lex shows Superman he rolls down a screen for a map and he's like Let, look at this map all this fucking real estate and Otis accidentally has a map of France pulled up instead of United States <laughs> and, no one will get it and, and, and unless it says France on it like Otis so uh, <laughs> in here he ends up showing him the miniature remember I told you about that miniature that yeah. has all the stuff that the destruction the yeah. models of the destruction and he wants to aim his missile at Poncho's Taco Palace as I mentioned in like part three now, okay, so this would be, in modern terms, they would probably change it to Randy's Donuts. Or something like in that. In L.A., yeah, yeah. like from Iron yeah. Man 2 or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But Poncho's Taco Palace, uh, we he's aiming for it because it's right over the San Andreas Fault. Okay. So he wants to blow up this place because that's going to set off the earthquake that he makes. Okay, so it's not really about the taco part. It's not about the taco part okay, at all. Okay, okay. I thought they just wanted to sneak in a... <laughs> You know, uh, uh, L.A. Uh, a staple. Xenophobic <laughs> Lex Luthor type of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that too. That too. I'm against, I'm against uh, aliens like you, Superman. I'm against immigrants. Dude, this I could Lex. see Lex being a white supremacist, actually. <laughs> it's actually not too much of a fucking stretch. Uh, and then we go to the real Poncho's Taco Palace. Okay. Uh, from, you know, one of those classic zoom in on the miniature and then yeah. fade into like the real one. Oh, okay, thing. yeah. And then there's a yeah. sign for a real estate advertisement for El Luthor Realty Company. Because you already bump, bought up the El land. Luthor. Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, L, yeah, not L Luthor as an E L, but L. Oh, okay. Luthor. You said Taco Place. I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just his initial. It means the Luthor in the, Spanish. The Luthor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. So Poncho's Taco Palace land has been built up, and a car shows up to the taco place, and guess what? It's Lois Lane. Lo okay. and behold, L okay. Lane. Uh, and then she's going to use the phone, right, yeah. to call her airline because she needs a flight back to Metropolis. Okay. And then all of this destruction. <laughs> Flying in the seventies. Yeah. Sounds rough. I know. <laughs> Smoking all, and fucking and all shit. The, all this stuff <laughs> ends up happening. So Andrew's going to read this off. Oh. The XK101 hit square on Poncho's Taco Palace, exploding it to smithereens. The San Andreas fault line in the desert begins to crack open. Then gates wider and wider. Great upheavals. San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge begins to shimmy and sway alarmingly. Its roadway buckles, its struts bend. Los Angeles, the Hollywood Hills are rent asunder. The famed Hollywood sign cracks in two as the mountains part. 
Highways buckling, collapsing, vast chunks of coastline dropping off into the onrushing sea. The Golden Gate Bridge collapses. Desert land flooded by the ocean as tidal waves sweep inland. As this sequence builds in momentum and horror so that the audience is absolutely convinced it is watching the terrible results of the splitting of the San Andreas Fault. Suddenly, as we watch what looks like an enormous Los Angeles skyscraper tumble into the sea, swallow it as, as it falls left, and we suddenly see the face of Lex Luthor full size behind it as, as if he were an enormous giant, a Gulliver. As the building hits the water, it sends up a splash, some of which gets Lex in the eye. <laughs> 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 Laughing, he wipes it off. <laughs> Thank you. So... <sighs> Personally, I think that's kind of an interesting, sinister look at Lex and his plan and stuff and how he revels in seeing the destruction of what's going to happen. <laughs> you okay there? I'm, I'm back. <laughs> okay. I wonder if my voice... Uh, obviously, this, uh, this my voice was, is okay. Yeah. <laughs> this would then show, obviously, everything's in miniature form, and then he's showing all this to Superman, and Superman is just like, okay, whatever, this is your plan, but I'm here okay. to stop you. And Lex is like... We didn't get our tea. And oh, shit. that's when Superman realizes, like, oh, I pressed the wrong button. Says Lex, I didn't press for tea. I pressed to launch the missile minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, it sounds like some Golden Age shit. Like, Lex, yeah. yeah. Which is cool. It's fun. Lex basically pulls an Ozymandias from Watchmen before Watchmen was published with the whole I did it 35 minutes ago sort of oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Where he's just like, this is why I'm explaining all this stuff yeah. to you because you can't fucking stop me. Yeah. Uh, so in the Benjamin Ozzy Man is great. Yeah, I think he's he a great villain, man. He's fantastic. Yeah. Did you see the HBO? One? I have not yet. <sighs> I want to. That actually is also before. great. Yeah. That's, That's exactly, exactly what I did. Yeah. I read the comic. I feel like you have to. Yeah. I never had actually read it before. Ah, oh, really? And so I read that and then watched the HBO one, and mm -hmm. it's great. It's it's like the best extrapolation of a mythology. Yeah. The mythology that is Watchmen into the modern times mm -hmm. just it's a master in my opinion of course mm -hmm. it's a master class in that kind of shit it's a master class in at adapting like you heard i know I, I know i'm really selling this but <laughs> fuck it's really good and it's hard it's kind of too much to chew the first episode you're like what the fuck is going on even if you've already read all the comics and kind of know them kind of okay. kind of cuz they switch up they switch it up enough i see okay and it and it has it, they, they they go with the comic too, the comic universe, not the Snyder yeah, one. Yeah, the, yeah. the squids in there, mm -hmm. squids are a major part of it. And just like relating, like like the first one's about '80s problems and shit, yeah. and the nuclear and the Cold War and all that kind of shit. This one's about race riots. It's about race problems. Right, all, yeah. You know, people talking about Tulsa mm -hmm. and all that stuff. You know, uh, like that movie brought that back. And it's, I mean, fuck, dude, I'm just surprised just how good it was. It's, I'll check it out. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, so, Lex pulls an Ozymandias yeah. on Superman, and in that draft, Lex says, "Even you can't fly that fast." And Superman says, "Well, we'll see how fast I can fly, and we'll see how fast you can swim." And he grabs Lex <laughs> and he dumps him in the tank with the albino alligators. Oh my God! So it would have paid <laughs> off. Uh, in the Benton Newman draft, obviously Lex survives that because he shows up later on. Okay. Uh, in that, but uh, I, I have a, I have another question now. Yes. Another side tangent, but it can be answered quickly, Ben. Yeah. Uh, so we've had uh, Superman and the Flash have races. Yes. What about Aquaman and Superman have a swim race? Ooh. Who wins that? Ooh. Here's the thing. I feel like you have to give it to somebody who's not Superman because otherwise, if Superman wins the race against the Flash, then what's the point of the Flash? If I know. he's not actually the best man alive. And then I if know. Superman races against Aquaman and Superman can swim better than Aquaman. Yeah. What's the point of Aquaman? I know. So I have I, to give it I to think so. Yeah. I, I think so, too. I have too. to give it to Aquaman. I think that he's obviously... I mean, Aquaman can't fly, you know? Like, we got to give Aquaman something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I agree with you 100%. Exactly, yeah. Some people have said, well, he would just fly in the water. <laughs> and I was like, well... That's not how it works. I, okay, maybe. But still, even if he did fly in the water, I, I wouldn't... Uh, I don't know. I would still really have swimming. to give it to Aquaman just yeah. because it's that's his thing. Mm -hmm. There's when it was rewritten, I think by Jeff Johns or something. There's a great panel in one of the Flash comics where he's like, "Remember those races we used to do, Soups?" Yeah, yeah. And Soups was like, "Yeah," and he was like, "Well, yeah, those were just for charity." Yeah, because <laughs> I think Soups won those. Oh uh, yeah. And then it, pff, yeah. you know, Flash yeah. takes that's off. That's fantastic. I think that's from yeah. um, Flash Rebirth. 
not the, not the no, rebirth line. Yeah, yeah, re- yeah. But the story called the rebirth. story rebirth. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you're right yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, That's a good beat. beat. It's That's great. a good story great, part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he he dumps him into the alligator tank and he flies to California yeah. to stop this missile. And he's and the missile's heading towards Poncho Taco Palace. And, okay. And we meet Poncho as he's watching the missile show up. Okay. In dread, and Superman grabs the missile and he takes it out of the stratosphere. Okay. Lois That's misses. Got to do. Lois misses the entire thing because she's on the on the phone. Uh, and Superman throws the Wham, missile. Man. <laughs> Superman throws the missile into space. Yeah. And uh, Poncho is like speaking in Spanish about how incredible it was, and Lois is just like whatever. And then she goes back into her car. Okay, that's, that's not. That's the end of the sequence. Not great. That is the end of the climax of the Benton Newman script for Superman the movie. What? <laughs> yes. There's no turn back time. There's no earthquake stuff. There's no him saving the the bus off. So you got a first. taco place. <laughs> And Lois doesn't like Mexicans. Okay, well, you got to keep in mind, it was all written. Superman 1 and 2 were written as one script. So this yeah, is kind yeah, of I seen know, as I like know. the midpoint. It's all kinds. <laughs> at least spent some time in Mexico, man. Everything you have is perfect. Saul kind Dominguez or something wasn't his name? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> so they're probably, I don't know if I like this part of the picture. <laughs> so obviously in the Minkowitz draft, it was way more elaborate because this is the end of an actual movie and not like yeah. a funny beat to put in the middle. I think they, they lost steam when they were right and they were like, ah, oh, my, my draft, I guess. I think they really just wanted to get to Zod. That's, yeah, I guess so. Superman too, oh, yeah, like, you're right. This is a tangent. This is a... This is a step on the way to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, again, it's, it's, not, it's written as one script. That's right. That's so, right. That's right. That's uh, right. In the Mankiewicz draft, Mankiewicz moves Lex using Kryptonite uh, on Superman to after he's explained the plan to him. Yeah, uh, which makes a lot of sense. Right. right. Here. So there's no amount of Vesuvius stuff, but it makes sense because he's already got Superman. It's like, okay, not only do, am I explaining it right after I've launched the missiles, yeah. but I'm killing you now, so you can't even do it. Okay. okay. Uh, and. That creates the idea of double jeopardy because Mankiewicz has two missiles in the in the in the script. He says, right. you know, not even you of your great speed can stop them both. That's why he put two missiles there, right? Because he knew that Superman would be able to stop one, but is Gotta he able up to the stop stakes. two? Yeah, exactly. Why couldn't he just like grab both on his shoulders though while flying? I don't know. Oh, well, they're going in different directions. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, so he yeah, would have yeah. had to have he, he would have had to have carried that all the way to the other side, and it might have gone off. And again, That's it's true. nuclear too, so it's not like yeah, he doesn't want to. Be tr- <laughs> it's over, not like over he's gonna get, Yeah, he's gonna get like surface to air missiles as whoo, going at Superman <laughs> all, while holding the nuke. Yeah. Maybe you, actually, maybe they wouldn't do that because he's holding a nuke. Wow, they would think he was the missile. Yeah. That would that would be a hell of a fucking scene, though. We need to rewrite this movie. If, if you know, I don't know how you get there. <laughs> yeah. Different from this movie, but yeah. that'd be, that'd be kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of it obviously is uh, with him trying to stop both missiles at once, and he only stops one, and that's why there's that beat where Lex says, I know where the other missile's going. It's going to Hackensack, New Jersey. And yeah. Mr. Desbacher says, my mother lives in Hackensack. And Hackman just looks at his watch and just shakes his head. And that's <laughs> it. In the script, he's like, your mother used to live. Right. Oh, in yeah. Sack, New Jersey. Yeah. So there was that would have been better. You think that would have been? Be- I think Hackman just does it with like one look, and he gets the same point across. It, but it I do like. Better, the, I do like the line. It's not a bad line. Yeah. Uh, it's a take it or leave it, maybe for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh. So let's see. Luther. It is better to do and not say. Yeah. Yeah. I would say in, so. In visual pictures. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Superman does stop the missile from going to Hackensack and saves Miss Desmacher's mom after she saves him with the kryptonite. We've already okay. covered that. Okay. Uh, and in the Mankiewicz draft, when the missile blows up in the San Andreas Fault, he actually goes down into the mushroom cloud. And that uses would be his, so sweet. He uses his super breath within the center of the mushroom cloud to blow all that up into the atmosphere. That would be awesome. I love that. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Because it's like... you. In the movie, it blows up, but you don't account for the fact that it's a nuclear blast. I'm sure California would have gotten pretty yeah. fucked up from all that. Yeah. But here it explains that he went into that so that he could put all that radiation stuff out of the atmosphere. That's cool. So there was a, there's a run where Superman that. gets fucked up by a nuke, though, right? And he has to go to the... Gets, yeah, Dark Knight Returns. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in the fucking... He gets the rays to, he gets, to yeah, sun rays. He, yeah, he's, he's on the ground. He's all, like, shriveled up. And yeah. then, like, you see the flowers just, like, shrivel up as he's getting more powerful because he's getting, he's getting I the forgot sunlight. about that. I, I remember the scene. That. I forget where it fucking came from. <laughs> yeah. Comes from Batman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Frank Miller just wanting to see him dead again. <laughs> or, no, for the first time at that time. Yeah. 
Uh, or so near dead, near dead. Superman goes around and he stops all these different disasters as we saw in the movie. So a, cu- a couple things that I don't think we really saw in it was at one point yeah. Superman reconducts all these electrical cables that got damaged and he like uses his own body to conduct the electricity through them. So he almost turns into like this blue light man to conduct the electricity. Signaling uh, what, Superman blue lightning or whatever the I fuck get, in the I 90s. Guess, Remember I, that shit? It, it feels foreshadowing on that, but I don't think that's what they <laughs> I know, I know. That do. was just kind of like one of the <laughs> sillier parts. Yeah. Although you gotta hand it to the '90s for really, really going there when yeah. they wanted to, true, true. you know. Uh, let's see. Superman also repairs the Hollywood sign, so it goes back to saying Hollywood again. I don't think we really needed that. <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's just like that's a, number one. We're making this. All kinds of like we're making this in LA. <laughs> Superman's like that's that's the main emergency right now. I gotta repair the Hollywood sign. Yeah, that's that's not really. That Though important. I think in the script it was mainly because they were about to fall on a bunch of Girl Scouts. Uh, and a cat. So he was, yes, and the cat too. Frisky. <laughs> <laughs> Frisky gets in danger again. Uh, but a lot of the stuff with the Dana. Superman's like, I don't need, <laughs> I, I don't need food, but I love those Samoas. <laughs> Samoans. Yes. What are they? Samo. Samo- Sam- I think it's Samoas. We'll, for- we'll, we'll have an apology in the next episode. Samoans are the people. Samoas. Yeah, so I think it's Samo- Samoas. Samoas, yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah, Correct anyway. us if you're a Girl Scout yeah, and you're sorry. listening to this. You probably Addis Ababa is a real, country, a real <laughs> capital to Ethiopia. Yes, yeah. uh, so let's see. As we go further along in this, Superman saving people through this whole thing, one of the big disasters is the dam breaking and about to flood this whole town. And okay. Superman has to bring down all the rocks and everything to, to stop it. Uh, that could be a reference to Action Comics number five, literally called okay. Superman and the Dam. Where okay. the same stuff happens again. I'm pretty sure that they were reading Golden Age Superman and stuff for this because he got all the Lex Luthor stuff and earthquake, yeah. you know, him causing earthquakes. Natural stuff. disaster stuff is cool. It's epic. Natural disaster stuff. Yeah. He even like the whole thing in the movie where he there's like the broken rail on the train, yeah. and he uses himself to be the rail. Yeah, that's kind of a version of that is in this story with Superman and yeah. the Dam. So yeah. I'm pretty sure they read that as like, what natural disasters could we put in this? Right. At least when it was Mankiewicz, actually, not Benton and Newman, because they didn't even have this stuff. They just had him say Poncho's Taco Palace <laughs> <laughs> in, in the Mankiewicz one. This is here. And okay, so here's comes the biggest difference between the scripts and the movie. And I think you've already referenced this before. Okay. Is that in the original script, Superman finds that Lois is in the car that's being crushed by all the stuff. Okay. And he goes in, pulls the car out and saves her. Right. And Lois is like, you know, he's like, sorry about the car. And she's like, forget it. It's a Hertz. It's a rental. <laughs> oh my God. And then that's it. Hertz is like, we don't need that <laughs> kind of uh, publicity. And then he actually saves her before he saves Jimmy. Like this, she's, she's not even the climactic final save. Jimmy Olsen, Jimmy oh. Ol- Superman and Jimmy Olsen guys uh, Jimmy Olsen <laughs> is the climactic save he saves Jimmy as he's falling from the dam and he stops him from midair and because he saved not much, that kind of love he story saves, he saves everyone else he this is in the three hour version as well he's flying midair with Jimmy and he stops with Jimmy he's like alright go ahead take a picture so that Jimmy can take the picture of the, I think the I saw flood. that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool and then he brings Jimmy back to Lois. He also diverts the flooded dam water over to this. Uh, this is in the three-hour version as well. Uh, the Native American reservation is in a drought, and so he diverts the water towards that. And so suddenly they celebrate because all the water is coming towards that's cool. the plant. So that's also cool uh, in that. But in the this is very different, as you've seen from the movie, because this is basically it. He okay. saves everybody, saves Lois, and then he just flies off to, to catch Lex. Okay. okay. But... This is where we get the the movie because, as we know, that's not what happens. Right in the movie, uh, he turns back time. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah so I that... can turn back time. <laughs> uh, so the the rotation of the fucking Earth <laughs> is not what causes time, but you know it's just pseudoscience. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I I know. I get. I get it. I wouldn't do that these days. It's a product oh, no, no, of its no, no. time. It's not going to happen in, in another Superman movie. For I sure. am all for silliness. I think it's one of the most controversial scenes, actually, of this movie. Yeah. I, I mean, I love silliness. Mm. I, you know, the Flash and CW has got the right kind of silliness. This has silliness. It's great, but I think that, that idea is just only do it once. Yeah, yeah. You know what so I mean? It's this, just not great. This climax with turning back time, okay, why was this added? The reason why is that it was supposed to be in Superman 2. Yeah. Yeah. As if you've seen the Donner cut, you've seen that they put that in Superman too. In fact, they even shot footage of what was going to signal turning back time with like Perry White putting toothpaste on his tooth- toothbrush, and then suddenly the toothpaste goes back in the tube as it's going. As Great, he's back I love that sequence. It's though. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
the main reason why I got moved to Superman the movie is because like this is our big stunt. Yeah. And we don't even know if there's going to be a Superman too. Yeah. Even yeah. though we have all this other footage, yeah. we don't even know. They had no happen. idea. So they're like, why don't we write in? him turning back time and so why would he turn back time to save Lois Lane yeah uh, but it also creates that kind of an interesting moment because of the whole fact that he goes against what Jor-El told him Jor-El was like it is forbidden for you to interfere in human history they had the prime directive yeah and then he also thinks back to his dad his yeah. other dad Jonathan Kent being yeah. like you're here for a reason and that's oh, yeah. what pushes him as well two as two dads as well as the you know the fact that you know all my powers and I couldn't save him when he's thinking about yeah. his dad and that's yeah. what pushes him to do it anyway right 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 so yeah, yeah, that's good. It's it's a good beat as well, and it has that emotional part. And Reeve is fantastic in that moment when he's yeah. mourning over her and he screams yeah. and everything. Yeah. And like I've, I always feel it from him in that, yeah. so that's fantastic. But what is missing in this version is that there is supposed to be a consequence to him okay. turning back time and everything, which is that the fortress is destroyed. Oh shit! That was I think that's also supposed to be in the Donner cut. If not, then that that was the original idea. That was okay. the whole reason why. Or, like, the reason why he shouldn't do that is because it'll destroy the fortress. So, like, he's sacrificing his background and his right. communication with Jor-El in order to do that. The, the fortress, fortress somehow knows about, because it's got advanced Kryptonian yeah, technology. Or something like that, it yeah. Kn- I mean, yeah, I could see. And, yeah. and so it'll, it knows to self-destruct if time ever were to go backwards. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he goes back in time and saves Lois, but the fortress is destroyed was supposed to be the idea in... Superman 2. It's like, yeah, you can't... Just being able to reverse time yeah. every time... I know we're okay with Superman being overpowered, but that's like above and beyond. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can just reverse yeah, everything. Why can't you just do that with everything? Yeah. like He'd be doing it, it if he fucking spilled coffee on Lois's dress or something yeah. the next day. <laughs> you know? Like, why doesn't he just do what Deadpool does at the end of Deadpool 2 where he just goes back in time and does all, fixes all sorts of shit? <laughs> They shouldn't you have know. done that either, but <laughs> at least you can excuse it in Deadpool too, because it's not supposed to be serious. I know. I know they yeah. tried to make it a little serious in the second one, but still, I like guess. Yeah. It, it didn't. I think Reynolds was against that scene, but really, I th- I think I read that because huh. it's I don't know I I don't I didn't like that either. I loved him getting his bl- brains blown out from reading uh, <laughs> Green Lantern. Green Lantern. That was awesome. Yeah. I mean, definitely keep that in there. But the mm-hmm. whole time thing, I didn't. I wasn't a yeah. fan of that. Yeah. Uh, Superman does fly faster than the light in order to travel backwards in time in Superman 157, the super revenge of the Phantom Zone prisoner, which I think has okay. Quexel, the guy who is the Phantom Zone prisoner with the goatee that I thought okay. maybe they modeled Zod's look off of. Uh, so that's the main time that that happened in the comics where he okay. like, goes back in time. But it's not quite like this where it's like it's to save somebody else. I think it's just right. him physically tran- going back in time, not okay. like undoing somebody's death. Okay. Uh, but anyways, it's sort of seen that maybe he turned back time in order to intercept or get that second missile before. Because okay. when he shows up again, like Lois is not in danger anymore. She just has trouble starting the car and the okay. dam seems to be back intact. And okay. Jimmy's just running over. Like it doesn't seem like he undid her death so much as he just stopped the second missile from hitting. Right. At least that's how I interpret it. Right. Uh, but anyways, he saves Lois. Lois and Jimmy talk to Superman for a bit, and Superman's like, I got to take off. Okay. And in the three-hour version, we get this scene, and this is where what I mean by the payoff. So we knew we got introduced to the babies, who yeah. in the three-hour version or in the film produce, production version, you just hear the sounds of animals and everything. Like, like vicious, like... Yeah, fucking, just uh, snarling and everything. Yeah. Uh, as Otis, like, basically was bringing down some meat for them yeah. to eat a meat carcass. Yeah. So we cut to Lex's lair, and Lex is playing music okay. uh, on the piano as Otis is bringing down Miss Tessmacher to feed her to the babies. <laughs> oh, man. And that and this is where Lex goes. This is where it's the evil. Because Lex she saved him. Because, yeah. Because she takes she off. She betrayed uh, him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Lex is going to feed her to the babies. And she's like, okay. why are you doing this to me, Lex? And Lex is like, because I love you. And then he tells Otis, feed him. <laughs> and then... Uh, Otis, because he's inept, accidentally lets the chain go and she falls down into it only for you to hear this. There's always, there's a, like, I, I, it's like a little bit of like people that are extremely intelligent. Yeah. There is a little bit of like, they're, they're, well, at least in literature, like their moral base has shifted yeah. because of their, their intellect. It, it, intellect or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. You, do you feel like that with Lex sometimes? feel like he used that as an excuse okay you know, yeah in order right to, to curve into his 
you know, baser instincts, right? You know, as opposed to actually having some sense of morality, right? Here. Right. So I think he's using that as an excuse. The whole idea of the the Ubermensch, yeah, uh, type of thing. The, the special person, the, right. the person who is above it all, and you're the extraordinary man. And you're all ordinary people. Right. Therefore, you're less of a person. That's what, he's the overman. That's what Dostoevsky's crime and punishment is all based off of. Is the idea of like I can commit this crime because I'm better than you, and then he realizes through that story that he's not. Uh, interesting. So I've never actually read that. You should check it out. It's that's uh, great. It's an interesting. It's more of a moral. Feels like a little bit more of a moral essay than a like very compelling story, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but still, it's like characters and and things like that. Uh, and it's. Well, some, people ha- some people can develop that kind of ego. Yeah, you know? well, he has that yeah. ego, and that's why he has he wants to to kill somebody. It's because of that, not because of revenge or money or anything like that. It's mostly because he wants to see if he can do it. Just because he can. Yeah, that's, I mean that's amazing. That yeah. says something about the human condition, y'all. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like and that. Then, and then he I realizes like that. that it's not as easy as he thinks, and that he's not this extraordinary man and stuff. So that's it's an interesting take. On all that stuff, I'd love for that to seep into a Superman movie somehow yeah, with Lex. Could, That's yeah. awesome. It'd be interesting. Crime and punishment. Superman. Crime. And punishment. I'm. I'm honestly, dude. I'm obsessed right now with thinking of like the perfect Superman movie. <laughs> like, like doing this now because this was. Clo- I mean, this is close. Honestly, yeah, this yeah. is such a great movie. But uh, you know, there's probably still a better one out there. Yeah. You know. I would think so. Do you do that? You're like, uh, you know, you read, read Batman comics, oh, you read yeah. Superman comics, yeah. like, oh, this should be in a movie. Well, I've drafted like the, a few in my mind, yeah. Yeah, like the the movie, first, I guess because we're both in the movie, and yeah. most people are, but like, it shouldn't be this way. Like, probably books should be the top uh-huh. medium, not comic books, but books. Uh-huh. I get it. Like, literature should be the top. Yeah. But for some reason in my mind, movie movies are like the pinnacle <laughs> medium. And like, if you were to perfect a Superman movie, it's like you've perfected that story, you know? I think a lot is because it has the biggest audience compared to yeah, the comics, compared yeah. to TV shows, compared to the animated takes on those or yeah. the video games. Like, this has the most yeah. exposure. So you want to make sure that the medium that has the most exposure right. has the best characterization, best story right, and everything right, so right, that right. people want to explore all the other things. And even if they don't explore all the other things, at least consider it to be a good movie or consider right. it to be a good story, good character and all those things. Right. So I think that's uh, that's why we think of it that way. Right. And you have an opportunity to recontextualize and retell stuff that you wouldn't normally do that the Siegel and Schuster didn't have an opportunity to do because they were starting from the beginning and they hadn't established right. certain things. Right. That's why I'm always compelled, even though it's like, okay, how many fucking times are we going to reread the origin of Batman or, or Superman? Yeah. But it's always interesting to me what differences come about from those uh, from the different interpretations because yeah. sometimes the, you hit upon something that like, okay, shit, that actually seems better and that's going to stick. I mean, I've done some cursory research on the King Arthur myth mm. and it's and it's not just King Arthur. It's This happens with all kinds of folklore, it seems like, yeah. where uh, something becomes so popular that it essentially beca- has public ownership after a certain point, mm-hmm. and you, uh, you know, people expand on that original core myth. Mm-hmm. Like I think Merlin was added by not even England. Like I think it starts in England, really? but then like extremely key shit mm-hmm. starts to come out like years later because they couldn't let the story go. <laughs> yeah. Like they love this story. Yeah. People love myths. It's dragons. It's fucking knights. It's magic. You know, like, it's just so, it's a lot of cool shit there, and we're doing that now with, started with Siegel and Schuster, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's this new version, and the major new part of it really is the science part, science fiction. That wasn't, Mm -hmm. science wasn't really a thing, you know, in King, you know, King Arthur times, you know, Mm -hmm. Arthurian legend and all that shit. That's a major shift, I think. Superheroes are definitely our myths. And then the, mi- the mystery novel is also fairly new. Fucking Sir Arthur Conan Doyle invented the shit, right? Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe did. Yeah. So, so that's, that's obviously Batman. Still uh, somewhat. Influencing yeah. Batman also. So it's like we have two very, very new genres that we probably don't think about as being as new. new yeah, but they are new relatively. Lost. Yeah, to everything and else. And like, so we're, it's like, it's definitely a whole new evolution in how we create myths. Mm-hmm. 
but it's still the same thing in a way. Humans creating myths that we love, I mean, stories that we love. Look how much we've been talking about Superman's history, and just like yeah. originally there wasn't Kryptonite. Originally it wasn't Jonathan yeah. and Martha Kent. Yeah. Originally, yeah. you know, there was no Daily Planet. He didn't fucking fly. Jimmy Olsen, no flying. And there's, yeah. there's so much like reading the original Golden Age versions is is fascinating, partially because of the story, but mostly because of how different it is. Yeah. From Superman, yeah. you know, and same thing when you read the original Batman comic or the original Joker comic like he's all like the just ins- he's strong but he's not insanely strong either in those right, initial ones yeah. right like he even though he's bulletproof i think i read one where like luthor's men or something like just hit him with a bunch of bullets and machine guns and he actually yeah. like it's not like he gets sh- shot as an injured but he actually like feels it. yeah like, yeah he's a yeah second, yeah that type of thing that's also why i thought it was cool in um that fleischer cartoon one of my favorites is the one on the train where he's trying to stop oh, the train and, yeah. and they keep hitting him with stuff and he he keeps like succumbing to it and he has to re-grab the train right and, like you got to remember like back then he wasn't as super powered it's, yeah. it's really the silver age where he could do all this shit about turning back time and yeah they, they <laughs> started going nuts things. with it but i think they were having people make fun of that time where like there's one comic i haven't read it but i've heard that he like blows out a star with his breath <laughs> you know like there was a point where they were getting really nuts, and people make fun of that time. Uh-huh. But again, I I enjoy that silliness mm. and really going over the top. Yeah. I I kind of think that we should return to some of that. Yeah, yeah. I think the best way to do go about it is the whole like Grant Morrison thing. Yeah. Of, uh, sort of acknowledging the past while also sort of recontextualizing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep the you know if there's a there's a silly tone to it, you know, have at least some tongue in cheek level to yeah, that so yeah. that you acknowledge it but not so much that it just seems like juvenile going back to real quick we'll, we will return we'll to return our to schedule the movie. Pro, but I think this conversation is worthwhile especially since we're in the we're in the last part of this we can get to these overarching things right. um, I think that again going back to like what would be a perfect Superman movie or near perfect I think that we need like the down home apple pie Superman we need those scenes mm-hmm. we need him on the farm and all that we need the sci-fi, obviously that that aspect, but I think the moves, some of his like moves, should have a degree of zaniness to it. Like I don't know, I think like in Superman, the animated series, he's doing like this windmill move to go into the ground, like <laughs> oh yeah, he does like this too, a little yeah. tornado yeah, thing. Does, too, yeah. does he do that in that? I forgot. Yeah, to get to Luthor's uh, sewer hideout. Okay, I I forgot about that, but I could do like a little bit more of that. We like, don't really see. Him. We've never seen Cavill do that. It should, I don't think. Cavill doesn't do it. I think we we could go a little bit more towards Dragon Ball, I, you know, because I think yeah. that that's actually in the spirit of the Silver Age, because they were just going zany. I think that there's yeah. something you could do a little bit zany, more zany with it. There is a there is a flaw. I think sometimes that going a little too hardcore, serious, realistic for yeah. something that wasn't really meant to be. Yeah. Uh, I think David Mazzuccelli from uh, Batman Year One put it best where it's just like the more realistic it is the more that the more fantastical elements seem actually more ridiculous yeah because they yeah. stand out so much yeah which yeah. Is, you know sometimes you can argue could it's verisimilitude again it's the verisimilitude aspect yeah. but it could you could argue like sometimes that might have like bitten like Nolan in The Dark Knight Rises in the ass or just like this is supposed to be like you know very thematic very you know serious movie but also we got Bane who sounds like this and like a bunch of yeah <laughs> a bunch of like weird plot stuff so he mostly no one mostly pulls it off but then there's like again there's that scene like the, the the courtroom scene is almost a little off in the dark night yeah dark night rises well it's a fake court with, the fake um, court with Jonathan Crane yeah yeah it's mm-hmm. it's it takes it to a a little bit of a comic book level that's a little bit more so than the rest of the movie I find that yeah, yeah. that scene to stand out a little bit. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't really thought about that one so much. It's not the worst part of the yeah. movie. No, 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 no. It's actually like kind of enjoyable, but it, it's just a, to me, I had a little bit of a knee jerk. It's like, okay, Nolan, we're being super serious now. <laughs> and then we cut to, you know, this. Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I thought it was a little weird, but. I thought the, you were wor- the worst part is it. just the pacing at the end of it. I thought you were referring to the Dark Knight scene where an Eckhart punches the guy on the stand and he's like, I recommend you buy America. Yeah, that also <laughs> took me out of it a little bit, but whatever, dude. I mean, it was, that wasn't I'm not that wearing bad. hockey pads. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. Uh, so back to Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Superman flies Lex, to, Lex and Otis over to the prison, yeah. Yeah. and that's where Lex finally takes off his wig. 
and yeah. where it feels like finally Gene Hackman is Lex Luthor because yeah. he's bald. One so, shot. Uh, one shot. Thankfully, a little more in Superman too. But yeah, uh, you never really see him wearing. Uh, you never really see him wearing the bald cap outside of those scenes. Unfortunately, right. Uh, right. It would have been fantastic if he wasn't the whole time. Right. Uh, and Warden, the Warden, just like you know, the country is safe thanks to you, Superman. And Superman's original line was, "And you, Warden, and the fireman, the doctor, the teacher, <laughs> the clergyman, the cop on the beat." I feel like that was a little much. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. That, so, so Mank cut, cut that out? Uh, that was in the actual original Mankiewicz script. Oh, but Mank. They must have I don't cut, know about that I think one. they cut that. Cause I think even Mankiewicz was just like, yeah, that might have been too much. The, on the day they're shooting, <laughs> he's hearing. Maybe the first take is like, he says, and they're like, ah, maybe we cut yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then the finale to the Mankiewicz script was going to be the reveal that the and and also in the Benton and Newman script, the reveal that the first missile that he threw out into space ends uh-huh. up blowing up the Phantom Zone, which frees all the prisoners. That, that would have been awesome, and that would have been the cliffhanger. You know, all of them come out and they're like, "We're yeah. free," and then they head towards yeah. Earth, uh, including blows up that little glass portal. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah, and that includes Jack L. <laughs> Remember Jack L? <laughs> I'm Jack L. <laughs> um, I'm like an artist. And then Mankiewicz writes in. Um, that we would see almost like a TV episode, you know, like on the next episode of this. But <laughs> so they were going like episodic. They're like that's essentially what Avengers does. Like they will return. But yeah, at the end yeah. Of the but, credits, we, but we would have seen selected film clips of the next movie. Oh shit! So wow. we would have you read off what was in the script in terms of what that trailer was supposed to look like. Selected scenes from Superman Two. Selected film clips from Superman Two with the exact content to be determined, but certainly establishing. Lois and Superman making love, fucking doing it. <laughs> Jor-El physically appearing before Superman to give him new life. Clark Kent being beaten up and bloodied. Zod, Ursa, Ursula from Little Mermaid, Ursa. and Nan destroying and conquering the world. <laughs> Insert shot of comic book and the tiny child's hand seen in the opening shot of the film. But the film comes back into frame, quietly turns over the final page of the Superman comic book. On the back cover is the enticing message, Don't miss this further adventures of Superman heading soon. Fade out. End of part one. So wow. the main reason why all this was cut was, again, they're like, we don't know if we're going to get a second movie. Okay. Even though we have all this other footage shot with Terrence Stamp and everybody and Sarah Douglas. Right. And Jack O'Halloran. But they're like, <laughs> oh, we don't even know if we're going to do that. Right. So that's why they didn't even show. He, Superman does throw the missile out into space, but they didn't show the effect of that. Right. Okay. Uh, and then when they started Superman 2 with Richard Lester with the reshoots, they're like, well, let's have an explanation in terms of how, a different explanation in terms of let's how. Let's have fly onto well, a lake. <laughs> And walk around for a bit. They <laughs> had a different explanation with him. And the whole, there's a whole sequence in the Eiffel Tower in the original Superman okay. theatrical cut that leads to an explosion in space that then frees the Phantom Zone prisoners okay. in the theatrical cut. Yeah, As yeah, opposed yeah. to the Donner cut where they're just like, remember this scene from Superman 1? Yeah, yeah. He throws into space and then boom, he's out. I'm like, that's a lot quicker right. uh, on it. But let's see. This, again, cut because they didn't think there was going to be a second movie. Uh, let's see. Last uh, few trivia things. One of them is that Christopher Reeve spent a year longer than everyone else on this movie because everyone wrapped shooting and he still had to shoot this flying specific, the specific flying scenes. No shit. Which, if you think about it, makes a lot of sense because how many? There's so many shots of him just going like this. Yeah. The whole time. And, and he's trying around. to be really serious about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everyone else went back home and he stayed in England, I think. Uh, or that's what it sounds like. It's a like. great gig, though. Yeah, I mean, I it's a lot of extra work, but shit, he's flying yeah. in a Superman suit every day. Yeah. Probably getting paid to work out. Yeah. Come on, dude. <laughs> that's pretty cool life. I'm just, I'm just saying that like, <laughs> it, there's a lot of work that went into the yeah. flying scenes yeah. that we yeah. need to acknowledge. Some of the shots are literally uh, the camera like zooming in on them. Yeah. You know, and the, it's they probably did a million takes to get it perfect, mm-hmm. but like if you look at it again, it's like, yeah, that's just a... The, I don't even think technically he's moving his on on wires... There's probably there's some wired shots too, but right. I think I think it's literally a camera above him, and they just zooming in, mm-hmm. and he's just going like put yeah. his fist up, yeah. you know. I think Reeve really helps sell the flying stuff yeah. here, yeah, and that's why he was needed for that long. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Other trivia thing that most people don't know or bo- most people don't realize: uh, this is the only Superman movie that's scored by John Williams. 
Oh, the others Williams are not, did not snow? show up at, at all in any of the others. He is credited in this, the Donner cut, yeah. pr- but I don't think he did a score specific to that. I think they just reused his cues from Superman. Williams knew when to leave. Williams did not get along with Richard Lester. Oh, it seems like nobody did. <laughs> so, I guess not. So, he left, and a composer named Ken Thorne did Superman 2 and 3. Okay. Using John Williams's. Everybody has used John Williams' theme yeah. afterwards, but John Williams himself never actually scored a movie he after. Yeah, there's no scoring Superman extra movie. shit. No, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah, else yeah. was done by everyone else. So, Ken Thorne did 2 and 3. Alexander Courage did 4. John Ottman did Superman Returns. Uh, of course, it's later on, it's but. so insane how much Americana is produced from one guy. Yeah, <laughs> Star Wars, Superman, Jurassic Park, E.T. and T. Jurassic. Yeah. I mean, E.T. E.T. and T. E.T. and T. E.T. E. Jurassic Park. Home. Did he not quite as big, but clo- <laughs> Close Encounters? He do that one too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, like fucking mm-hmm. Indiana Jones too, right? Yep. Like, where so does it, where does it stop? Harry Potter, pretty much. Did he did he stop at that one? Well, I mean, he still is doing scores, but I feel like there hasn't he hasn't really done one as iconic since Harry Potter as like a new theme, you know? Right, right. I think everything else afterwards has been like you know brought him back for Indiana Jones four and brought him back for the Star Wars sequel trilogy. No but, one's at that level, man. Yeah. Especially the catchiness. Like Elfman did it. I mean, look, I can't do that shit at all. I can't right. play any instrument, mm-hmm. so. What do I know? But like Elfman dead Batman, mm-hmm. and that's like the catchiest one. Right. Well, yeah, some of the some of the other stuff too. But it's just like Williams, like all like da na 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 na. You know, from fucking mm-hmm. Jurassic Park. Like yeah. you kind of hum a lot of his shit. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't know. He's fantastic I, at that. But. Enough sucking John Williams' dick. But the man's <laughs> a genius. He's great. He's great. So yeah, the, this is the only movie with his score in it. But everyone okay. else certainly you know used his theme or Can You Read My Mind? They used it in Smallville. <laughs> yeah. They used it in uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, crossover when they were introducing the Brandon uh, Ralph oh, Superman. Yeah. So it's uh, they've definitely been using his themes a lot. But he himself only did this movie. Makes sense. So there we go. And that. Le- Lester only got uh, Lester really got <laughs> only got along with the Salkinds, probably. It seems like it. Yeah, you're gonna be the perfect director. Yeah. <laughs> Gene Hackman didn't want to come back. <laughs> yeah, and John Williams didn't want to come back. So they all know. We'll they see. all knew. Yeah, uh, but it still outgrows Empire Strikes Back, apparently. In spite of that, uh, uh, Superman two did, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that is superhero stuff you should know. All right, and we have a few, as usual, our uh, custom shout-outs to our fans and comments that have been left for us on YouTube and Facebook. So uh, first off, on YouTube, uh, Mitt Bronx uh, talked about, uh, I guess, our discussion on the goatee that was added on Zod. Mitt Bronx. Yes. Oh, yeah, I did see this yeah. one. Go ahead. Uh, Mitt Bronx said, quote, I thought the goatee bad guy trope had to do with the devil having a goatee, so then you would know that they are evil. That's probably where they got it for. Funny enough, we talked about this on the Patreon. Oh, we when did. We talked about oh, how yeah. Jor-El sending Zod to the Phantom Zone. Yeah. People have compared to God casting Satan out of heaven. Right. I just, I guess I kind of forgot that Satan had a has a goatee in so many in iter- popular culture, so yeah. many iterations, yeah. and that's probably where. Because I was just thinking evil Spock, but evil Spock <laughs> yeah. gets it gets from, that from Satan yeah. from that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's just so many interpretations of Satan and Lucifer and all that. Like I don't mm. know. I like I, I get confused. Yeah. I forgot all about that really. <laughs> So yeah, thanks I for grew up that in out. a church, y'all. <laughs> I don't think they were talking about describing the devil with a goatee, though. Or were they? I don't think so, man. I, I forget how the devil's really described. I mean, obviously mm. a snake in one in Genesis, but right. and later on, I don't know. And like, there's been a lot of memes lately I've seen. This is a side thing, but like, angels in paintings are always like beautiful looking. But angels, how they're described in the Bible, it's like eighteen <laughs> eyes, yeah. and four, you know, like it's in, it's insane looking. Yeah. It's not basically, you it's know, like how Jesus doesn't actually look like a white dude with a beard. Exactly, yeah. and there goes the rest <laughs> of our audience. But yes, yes, I agree. I agree with that too. Something We're happened whenever the Roman Church. Yeah. When what's his name? Constantinople. One of the, I think Constantine. One of the guys starts with a C. Or Constantine. Constantine. Yeah. Accepts Christianity essentially. Christian, Christianity becomes white at that point. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I think. Yes, yes. Jesus being white, everything looking renaissance. It's obviously that leads into the Renaissance, and just everything having like the wrong look. We got way deeper into this than I was expecting, but yes, I love it. <laughs> I agree. Uh, anyway, look it up on fucking YouTube, <laughs> but it, but better sources yes. such as scientific journals and whatnot. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, let's see, on YouTube, the user Green Arrow talked about the uh, the Batman and Robin deep dive that we did about all yeah. the stuff that was in the script that was cut. And he said, quote, some of these deleted scenes are very interesting, but this video has made me laugh so hard because you guys are so funny. Love Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hopefully let's not just the joke we stole from, uh, <laughs> from <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Smith. Smith, but it's such a great joke, title. sir. Yeah. Sir yeah. Smith out there. Kevin, 45-year-old Chris O'Donnell. <laughs> He's actually 50 now. So, been, so yes. <laughs> Five years have passed since Batman Forever. I'd love, oh my God, old Robin, like old man, old man Logan, like old man Robin <laughs> on HBO Max. Are you kidding me? That'd be so good, dude. And Chris he's not Nightwing. He's fucking he's Robin. He's just Robin. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not with Batman, though. You know what I said? That fan film, Grayson. Did you see that? I actually have not. It was a guy who uh, was like, what if Batman died and Dick became, decided to avenge his death, but was in the Robin outfit. Not a bad idea, really. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it looks really cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a long time ago. It's one of my one of the underrated fan films out I, there. I like that. I, I mean, I love the idea of Batman being able to be replaced and all that. That's mm -hmm. cool. Keep that for some runs. But I also do like the idea of Robin being like, I'm fucking Robin. Yeah. You know? And even though Batman's gone, I'm still fucking Robin. Right. I like right. that kind of thing. I think so, too. Yeah. Uh, Facebook from Robert S. In my This is about our unlimited what? Uh, Batman Returns script deep dive. <laughs> You uh, have that so. question answered the first second of that episode. <laughs> first two seconds, uh, maybe. Where we talked about the unproduced Sam Hamm script, as yeah. well as the uh, Daniel Waters script that was written before the revision by Wesley yeah. Strick for the movie. Yeah. And Robert says, in my opinion, I would mix both of the original scripts together into one, and I think that would be interesting. Okay. Which I think we talked about okay. on there, where it was just like, well, what if it was the same characterization for Penguin and Catwoman, right. but with a plotting of the Sam Hamm script? Okay. All right. So I think Sounds that'd be cool. Good to me. Plus, you know, Penguin storming Rain, Wayne Manor at the end would have been awesome. Yes, that would have been cool. So yeah. all those sorts of things. So we agree, uh, Robert. So yeah, those are our okay. Those are our custom channels. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for commenting. It's very important. Yes. It's very. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you once again to that of Kukinoms, Matt Herring, Elijah B, Shamrock Bills, Aaron Willett. Ian H, Dan D, Leom O. Let me know if it's Leom or Liam. Uh, I don't know. Yes, I don't know if pronouncing your name wrong in every episode. <laughs> um, I go with Leom, like uh, Leom the professional. Yeah, I feel like it's probably that. But correct us if we're wrong. It just seems like Liam is too country. Too for American. Me. Yeah. yeah. Leom O, Super Inframan, and Douglas P. Please join the Shasta Army on Patreon.com slash Superhero Stuff Pod. Uh, we removed the $3 tier because it sucked. <laughs> we didn't like it. We want to give you quality tiers. Isn't mm -hmm. that right, Ben? That is correct. <laughs> so we Fuck have, the $3 tier. Fuck that shit. <laughs> so what we have now is a $1 tier and then a $5 tier and then some after that that you get goodies along with that. We've already got um, Super Inframan mm -hmm. has uh, participated in that. Yeah. Yeah, the mug tier, and uh, we do have, this is going to, so we have all kinds of, like, wizard tiers and Ben Man tiers and all that kind of shit, so check that out. Yes. Also, we got a red bubble store if you want to just do a one-time payment, mm -hmm. but if you were so nice, like our Patreon, and just want to be part of the fun every month, that's also good mm -hmm. as well. So, uh, so yeah, but the main ones, of course, may, uh, $1 tier, $5 tier, $5 tier, you get the bonus episodes, the bonus feed, and uh, we do deeper dives in that and yes. news too um but mainly the deeper dives yes and uh those are every week and you pay by month so you get basically four extra episodes a month for mm -hmm. that five dollars you can cancel after one month if you want mm -hmm. you know if you just want to try it out um so so yeah that's patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod mm -hmm. and then uh please leave us a review in itunes and the reason for that is uh, the more reviews we get in the iTunes store, uh, the, it increases our, vis our visibility. And then, of course, record us a phone bumper. Uh, a bumper is like a little audio clip. Record us a little anything on your voice recorder app and uh, email that clip to superhousepodcast at gmail.com. Please burp. Can you read my mind? Please. <laughs> Especially if you <laughs> Usually we wouldn't call out gender specific, but... I think that would be funnier from, from a woman, yes. Because it's a, cause it's a Lowest Lane <laughs> yes, thing. Yes, Because it's a Lowest Lane yes, thing, okay? Yes. 
And then uh, I'm Thunderwolf Drew on Twitter and Instagram. And we're on YouTube if you haven't seen us already. Just search for superhero stuff. You should know on there. And uh, Ben Cave also. Yes. Uh, yep. So we have, at the time of this recording, two, uh, two, two, uh, three. How many we have? We have out? two that have been published, but a third that's a in third the third on the way. Yes. Very soon. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's uh, the like very much YouTube specific content we're doing right now. And uh, let us know if you want to see more of. Sorry to put you on the spot, Ben, but more of uh, <laughs> the, his collection the ben here. Ben collection. Yes. Whatever comics you got over there. Mm-hmm. People love those videos. I mean, I watch them myself. Yes. So yeah, I think that's it. Nice. Thanks for the super tutelage. Uh, no problem. Superman 78. Yes. That's it. So what's next uh, week, five Ben? Part. Next part is on, we talked about myths and the origins of all these things. Well, we're going to do a deep dive into the evolution of, it's the 80th anniversary of Robin, but specifically the Dick Grayson Robin. So oh, I shit. thought to honor Dick Grayson the best, we would go into all the different origins that Dick Grayson has had that led him into being Robin. So, sure, everyone's like, well, what else is there outside of the circus shit? Well, yeah. Why is he named Robin? Where does the costume come from? Oh, All those types of stuff. Who came up with that? Who came up with the idea of Robin being a, a name that comes from his family versus just something that's named after a bird and all those things as well as the weird time that bruce wayne was robin before he was batman so all those sorts of shit we will dive into in a very deep dive for our 80th anniversary of robin and how tight burt ward's shorts were we'll spend an extra hour on that <laughs> one as well that'll be the patreon anyway we're going back to gotham y'all <laughs> yes see you next week see ya Take care.